if you're a small streamer looking to grow, you've probably heard the words, YouTube is more discoverable than Twitch so many times that you're hearing it in your sleep. So you've gone away and you've tried to create YouTube videos, but it just isn't working. Nobody is watching your videos and you're certainly not seeing more growth over on Twitch, despite the fact that you're working harder now to create more content. Don't worry guys, today I'm gonna cover exactly how to start a discoverable YouTube channel and how to grow your base here and over on Twitch. Let's go. Hey, I'm LJ with streamscheme.com. I'm also a variety streamer over at twitch.tv slash LJM underscore. There is a link in the description to that, as well as our website streamscheme.com, which has over 700 guides now and more releasing daily, all about streaming and content creation that you can go and check out right now. Today, I'm going to be breaking down a few huge mistakes and misconceptions about YouTube growth and discoverability that a lot of creators have. Seriously, just watching this video and learning these tips is going to set you so much further apart than a normal Twitch streamer who's just creating random content and who's following this pathway. But first, before we get into that, I have to tell you guys about another thing that will set you apart, our sponsor, Own.TV. Seriously, they've turned installation for any of their assets, whether it's a full animated overlay, alerts, sounds, anything you can think of. It is an art form, one click, and it's all installed. Check it out with the link in the description. If you want to support me, go and support them because it really helps the channel out. Speaking of the description, there are time codes down there and in the top comment. So if you want to, you can use that to skip ahead to any part of this video. However, if you miss a section of this video, you're probably going to be confused later on or ask what tool is that or how do I find this thing? So you know what? I'm going to say it. Take me off the second monitor today. Put me on the first monitor. Pause Waifu Simulator 2021. Your WoW Raid Leader can be happy to have 15 minutes later. Come check this one out properly. I swear it'll set you up to actually grow on Twitch. I can feel everyone taking me off their second monitor now and it feels very weird, but let's get into it. So at most people's core, especially people who have been watching YouTube for a very long time, who are ingrained in the YouTube culture, there is a massive misunderstanding and misconception about how this platform works. I'm going to be using gaming as the main idea for this video because I know a lot of you guys are trying to create gaming channels and gaming streams. However, you can use this to kind of create anything you want on this platform. You've seen viral videos blow up a channel or you've watched your favorite creator over years slowly releasing weekly or daily content of gameplays, montages, highlights and fails and eventually it just clicks and they have hundreds of thousands of viewers. That might have been how it worked back when gaming was fresh and small but it doesn't work like that anymore. Gaming on YouTube is just as saturated if not more than gaming on Twitch and it's just as hard to be discovered when you're doing it. If you create gameplay and let's play content, you see, nobody is searching Minecraft Let's Play episode 69, or they're not searching Call of Duty Warzone match number 420. It's just not a thing they care about. And if they do search those things, you're not going to come up because of the YouTube algorithm. You don't matter. And because you don't matter, they're not going to show your videos to anyone. So how are you supposed to get discovered if they don't care about you? Well, today I'm going to get you guys to matter to the YouTube algorithm. So how do YouTubers get discovered by people? Or more importantly, how do YouTubers get discovered by the YouTube algorithm? Well, first, we just need to start getting a few clicks on your channel and on your videos. We need the YouTube algorithm to go, hey, there are people interested in this content. You probably look at YouTube and because of the way it works, you've forgotten that at its core, it's a search engine. Just like Google, just like Bing. Well, maybe not Bing because nobody uses it. But what do we use search engines for? I know it sounds obvious, but we use it to answer questions and to fill needs, to provide value to ourselves when we are looking for something. For gaming, this could be things like how to use crucifixes in Phasmophobia, or how to unlock the new Call of Duty Zombies Easter egg, or one of my personal favorites, how do I install mods into insert any game title here. I know I said this four months ago on my YouTube growth video, but I have to cover it again because we have a lot of new people and it wouldn't make sense if I skipped over it. So the first step to discoverability is we need you to be the person who answers those questions for someone searching for it. So step one, go down to the description, find the vidIQ link, grab it. It is an extension for a lot of different types of browser, and it will really help you for this process. Yes, you can use things like TubeBuddy or Tubix, but I'm going to be using the free version of vidIQ today because I think it's the most accessible for you guys to start with. Once you have vidIQ installed, it's going to go a long way to help you understand those questions people are asking. You can see their search intent. What do they need? What do they want? I'm going to be showing you a full breakdown of this video, so we're going to work through it now. So to start with, what I need you to do is open up a new tab. I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to think of a game that you want to create content around. I want you to type that game title into the bar. 
press space, and you're going to get a bunch of autofill results. If I were to type in Sea of Thieves, one of the main ones that comes up is Funny Moments. If I were to click that, then vidIQ is going to show me the Sea of Thieves scorecard. If you look at the volume score, this refers to how many people are searching for this topic, question, or keyword roughly. It is in the green, meaning that a lot of people are searching for this, but the competition right below it is high, meaning there are a lot of bigger creators making content on this search term or keyword. A keyword is kind of like a video tag or it's just a thing that lets YouTube or a search engine know what your video and your channel is about. The paid version of vidIQ does go into more detail, but when you're just starting out, this is all you need to start getting an idea of what people want. So if I want to start making Sea of Thieves content, but it's highly competitive, what am I supposed to do? Well, if I type Sea of Thieves in and then go tips and tricks, we'll get a different scorecard. The new scorecard spits back volume 57, so it's much less searched, but it's still a decent size. The most important thing here though, is the competition is so much lower than funny moments. I've seen some larger creators say things like, don't niche down because it's capped, don't use small categories because it's capped, except we're not trying to get millions of views right away. We're just trying to start you out, get people clicking you and get you discovered. Because if we get you discovered and get a few people clicking you, even if they don't subscribe right away, they'll be cookied by YouTube so that if a video of yours starts doing well, they'll be recommended that video further down the line. So the takeaway here, we're going to provide value. We're going to answer questions, create guides, and overall, just start appealing to those smaller niche topics. But we need to get more specific for you because it's going to be less competitive the more specific we get around topics. I will show you how to do that in a second. First, I just want to say you can do this exact same process using social media. If you were to create a high valuable video or a very entertaining video, you can manually share it around communities such as Reddit or Discord or Facebook groups. However, check their self promo rules because if you post a video that you think is amazing, but they've got self promotion there and they ban you, then it's really not going to help you grow. However, if they don't have any issues with self promotion, that is the same as appearing in the search results and getting a few quick clicks. That said, I don't really recommend this because at the end of the day, if you're going to create good searchable content while you're asleep, that'll still rock up in the search results. You can't post your stuff all over social media while you're asleep. So you should understand a little bit more about search intent and I'm going to niche it down even further. Sorry if this is a long video already. I just love this stuff and I want to throw it out there. If this video helps you out at all, consider checking out my other content about YouTube growth and Twitch growth and everything else. Seriously, there is a lot of videos on this channel that people are very kind as they have helped them out as well as a bunch of free animated overlays in our Discord, which is linked in the description, so you can go check those out. You can join, download them, and leave. I don't really mind. They're all just there, though. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I'm not good enough at games to make guides, or I don't know enough about a game to make a video about it. No, you don't know enough yet. It's about research. I know YouTube is supposed to be fun, and it's a hobby and stuff, but if you really want to do this properly and see really great success, you need to spend time researching the topics you're creating guides on. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's get more niche down and figure out what is a good and a bad topic and keep going. Earlier we searched Sea of Thieves and I kind of gave you an idea of what's good and bad, but let's check other games that you might want to make content on, such as Among Us. If we go to Among Us and we search one of their highest education terms, Among Us How to Play, it has huge volume, but it also has massive competition. Let's look at something with less volume. Among Us Beginner's Guide, but it still has huge competition. So Among Us is out. We just can't create guides about Among Us. Let's instead check out another massive game, maybe not Among Us sizes, but it was still very popular to its community, Phasmophobia. Or we could look at something like Valheim, which is another one that is early access. There's a lot of information floating around. People want to know how it all works, so they're searching for it. I'm recommending games like Phasmophobia or Valheim here because if I were to recommend something like Stardew, which is popular, not as popular as Among Us, but has also been around a long time, it's kind of been done to dead. Everyone has covered all of the guides and information, and there really isn't much you can bring to that topic. Compared to Phasmophobia or Valheim, which is still early access, still quite fresh, there are updates coming out so you can cover all the new information, and it's a lot easier to get into that space. Okay, so we've picked our niche. We'll say it's Phasmophobia we're going to start with. How do we actually come up with the video ideas? How do we niche down to just covering a single question? Well, I have two ways that I come up with all my video ideas. The first is I have an understanding of the topic. You see, I am a Twitch streamer. I know what Twitch streamers are going through. I know the issues they're having and I can look those things up and work with them. The second is, as I've shown you, you can use vidIQ to find these questions and find these things and confirm your gut instincts. If you put these two things together, you get a good idea of search intent and what people need. For example, I love Phasmophobia and I've been playing it a lot. However, I know when I first started out, I had no idea how to use the crucifix and no one else did because there's no instructions in the actual game. I apply that to vidIQ and I can see that people are searching for how to use the crucifix in Phasmophobia. 
that's a video. Or I could cover all the different ghost types and what they do and what to be wary of them in a video. See how this narrows it down further to more niche questions? This will allow you to muscle in and start appearing in those search terms and start getting clicks. Small Ant did this fantastically with his early videos about speedrunning and Super Mario Odyssey speedrunning guides. He covered specific kingdoms, how to set up timers, or specific moves that speedrunners will need. I'll cover that more in a second, but if you don't want to do guides and tutorials, you can also do reviews. However, you should be quite quick on the draw with your reviews, and I recommend having some sort of gimmick, whether it's your really angry or you only do retro or it's a always will I buy this game or do I get enough hours out of this for the price always come up with a gimmick for your reviews to help you stand out so for this to work you do need to focus on a niche or on a single topic and there is a way to easily transition out of being a guides channel it just takes some work I mentioned small ants guides and that's kind of the best example I can give you from someone who's gone from just creating guides to blowing up to personality People wanting to get into speedrunning would find these videos when searching for guides. And his guides would be shared in speedrunning communities to help people. They aren't half-assed either. He put a lot of work into his content, so it has huge value to his viewers and to the people looking for these things. So he creates guides, he's gained a few subscribers, and even if they haven't subscribed after watching his video, YouTube has flagged that person as interested in Small Ant's content because they watched it. So what happens next? How does he go from that to personality content? Well, he started releasing videos that you can't help but click on. They're engaging and enticing and interesting to his target audience, people who are interested in challenges, speedrunning, and Super Mario Odyssey. I'm not saying clickbait either. It's just very, very enticing. Clickbait is this scary word everyone says they don't like anymore, but if you deliver on your title and you deliver on your thumbnail, it's not clickbait. It's just good marketing. For example, let's look at his channel. One of my favorites and one of these early day videos was I was the third person ever to do this speedrun. Which, by the way, when he recorded that, he only had 26 paid Twitch subs on his channel. Now look at him. We're up to 26 subs now. Let's go. Sub goal is now 26 to 25. I did reach out to Small Ant to confirm this next part, but I didn't get a reply, obviously. He's massive and I didn't expect it. So it's hard to be 100% certain. But the video I truly believe kicked off his personality growth was this one. On December 10th, 2018, he released the video... I tried to beat Super Mario Odyssey blindfolded. Not only was this video incredibly clickable, it had something that makes YouTube more excited than a kid on Christmas. It had retention rate. You had to watch the entire video in full in order to find out whether or not he actually beat it. And YouTube only cares about that retention rate because the longer you're on their website, the more ads they can serve you and the more money they can make. In the 30 days that followed the release of this video, he got 4,000 new subscribers and then he grabbed a one-up mushroom, which is the worst joke I've ever written, and released this beautiful video. I was the first to beat Super Mario Odyssey blindfolded. It had everything the first video had and more. It was a promise if you watched all the way to the end, you'd see a man beat the game completely blindfolded. No longer was he a tutorial and guides channel. He could release pretty much whatever he wanted as long as he stuck to his two niches. Challenging gameplay and speedruns and Nintendo. He was good to go. Don't get me wrong, he still had to create incredibly high quality content and he'll always have to do that because of the type of content he produces. If he had released those blindfolded videos originally without anyone knowing who he was, I don't have much faith in the fact that it would have blown up. It might have been picked up in Reddit, but that takes a lot of luck. By doing it the other way around, he was known in the industry, he was known in the communities, and he had a base there on the YouTube algorithm. From my research, it usually takes around 15 to 20 tutorials or guides in the YouTube algorithm before it starts really picking up your relevancy of your channel and sharing you. Sometimes it can take as many as 30. It depends on how good you are at understanding user intent and the amount of quality that your video has. If you want to know more about how to create high retention videos or how to create a really clickable thumbnail or how to use video tags, I do have that other video about YouTube growth. It'll be linked in the description so you can check that out. It covers a lot of the upload process, writing descriptions and everything else you'll need. But finally, I promised you this would help you grow on Twitch. And if you don't believe that everything I've just talked about and getting an audience here on YouTube will help you grow on Twitch, this is the final step. Every single video, all 15 to 30 of them, even before the YouTube algorithm starts picking up, tell them, hey, I'm LJ from streamscheme.com and you can check me out live at twitch.tv slash LJM underscore. Because any video you upload has the potential to explode, has the potential to blow up, has the potential to be the number one ranked video for a search term. So that means every single person who clicks that has the potential to convert to a follower on your Twitch channel. There's another YouTube growth coming next week, so make sure to subscribe. It's gonna cover the seven unbreakable rules of YouTube growth. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for listening.